Are you ready to invest in yourself today? Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. Where investment leader Billy Epperhart teaches you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom. Scripture says in Deuteronomy 8.18, Remember the Lord, your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. At Wealth Builders, our goal is to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. Now, let's join Billy Eberhart. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Feeling the anointing. But I don't know, I'm feeling the anointing, but I'm not sure I'm feeling any love whatsoever, especially after that session. Hallelujah. Yeah, one of the decisions reached, we're going to have to put on everybody, you got to love Billy to get to heaven. Hallelujah. The, uh, so I, I hope you understand the decisions reached. And so I want to say this regarding decisions reached. Decisions reached are not the minutes of the meeting. You don't run them like the minutes of the meeting. You don't use Robert's rules of order. You are not taking minutes. Recently, I hired somebody. uh, I think it was Lily, who's still in the office. He's in our office. And uh, I think this is Lily. I don't put it on Lily Fern. It's not Lily, but it's one. Or might have been right before Lily. I explained decisions, Reese, just like I've done to you. Drew it on the board, on the whiteboard. Here's what it is. Put the name beside it. And I come back in, and the first time I go to read Decisions Reach, it's minutes like I'm reading board meeting minutes. This is not minutes. It's intentionally not minutes. It's intentionally, I know what minutes are. You know what minutes are. Or many of you do. This is not minutes. I know the clubs, the local Rotary Club, they all have minutes. Lions Club will run with minutes. I know that our board meetings are run with minutes. I know occasionally on some legal stuff we do, we have minutes just to have a record. This is not minutes, this is directives. I'm not recording Sue's feeling about an issue. I am saying that we have agreed, Sue, you're going to do this and this by the next meeting or by two meetings from now or next month, and we're going to review it at that time. And until the time comes back, in fact, let me just say this because, because this is important. You don't take it off of the decisions reached. Even if it's four weeks later, it still stays on there until a decision is made. If it's still not done, then it's either given to someone else or you as the leader of the meeting and the leader of the organization decide in the meeting so everybody can hear it, we're going we're gonna to take that off the decisions rates right now and we'll come back and visit it later. Okay, similar to tabling an issue if you're running by Robert's Rules of Order. But I just want to be clear, the reason I've said that, one of you asked me that question at break, and then I've had this happen whenever we teach this, that then people will call back later and say, well, our minute situation's not working because they're taking 10 minutes to read the minutes at the meeting. And, and so let me give you a couple of guidelines because we're talking about how to run a meeting. Real quick, you ready? Number one, your meetings, most meetings should not last more than an hour and a half. It is okay if they go two hours. And the reason that they go longer than that, in fact, I think uh, I have it on the other, in the, on the slide, but let me just say this seven times, seven different ways. You do have to allow for spontaneity. So you, I'm not talking about running this rigid meeting where nobody can get excited and nobody can, get, can have input. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you just have to direct the meeting. What I am saying is no problem solving in the meeting. And so the kind of the directive we've used is we, you have five minutes. We have five minutes as a team. To if there's something that we think is a problem. But most, listen now, most meetings get sidetracked by two things. Two things sidetrack a meeting. Number one is felt needs. 
So here's what I say. We're going to pray in the beginning of this meeting. And we're going to pray Jesus over the table, under the table, around the table. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to believe God for you. We're going to take 10 minutes. We're going to pray. The Holy Ghost is going to fall. We're going to take an offering. We're going to have church. But when that's over, no more crying. You get 10 minutes to cry. You say, man, you're a taskmaster. Well, it's kind of a joke here, okay? I'm <laughs> trying to be lighthearted with you, but I'm trying to get you to understand you got 10, we, we got, we're doing God's business. Right. You did that in a corporate setting, and I've been in some of them now, some big ones. And you get to crying about something, they're going to call you in the HR department, they're going to review your file with you, and they're going to say, you know, this is not working. Here in the real world, not that easy at all. So in the church, we make excuses. So we're going to pray. So Carrie's got a need, Father, in Jesus' name. We realize what Carrie's been through in the name of the Lord Jesus. We t- God, we just ask you now, strike her with your uh, something. <laughs> That's a joke. Anybody listening? It's a joke. Huh? And so we pray, but in all sincerity, we pray, we pray, okay? But then as you move forward, here's what I want you to see. So either felt needs or problem solving hijacks every meeting. So you cannot allow problem solving. Now, I have a whole chapter in chapter uh, chapter. It's either chapter seven or chapter, uh, chapter seven. Chapter seven in the manual, what's the title of it? Chapter six. six in the manual is problem solving. So we teach you how to have a problem solving uh, meeting, problem solving team forum, and we teach you how to address it. So when Dr. Atke says to you, and you're watching his stuff, and he says, don't problem solve. Now, just so everybody knows, when I, when I mentioned Dr. Racky, only so you know and on the deal, uh, I've known Dr. Racky many years, okay? I didn't meet Dr. Racky here at Karis. I had, I had Dr. Racky coming to where we were, way back there. So I've heard the basic CEO training. I finally, I went, aha, on the sixth one, on one particular thing, which is one of the reasons that I share this, but the stuff, the actual stuff, 98% of what's in the organizational mastery manual I already had written before I ever met Dr. Ed. And if he wasn't at Karis teaching, I would have some of his stuff in there. I'd give him credit for it. I'd say, Dr. Ratke says, and I've said it in this meeting several times, but the point is, there's no reason to put his stuff in there because, so we keep teach it parallel. So you, here's the point. He says, don't problem solve in the meeting. So he says, go with your team and go problem solve. Issues and problems become opportunities. But then he doesn't tell you how to problem solve. How do you run that problem solve? Now he does, he shows the team empowerment. But I'm like, what do you actually do when you get in the meeting? And can I say this to you? If you are running the meetings I've directed here with stuff, especially in the training period, dysfunction rises if you put a bunch of people who have high levels of felt needs in a problem-solving meeting, you have the opportunity for a disaster. So let me give you a nugget. Here's a nugget. It's worth the price of everything you paid to come to this deal. Is that if you have high levels of felt needs that are still coming into a meeting, then you need to meet with those folk, pray for them, counsel with them, encourage them, love them, touch them, be with them before they ever get in the meeting. And I'll give those of you that operate maybe at a little higher level a word of wisdom here. 
A word of wisdom is if you have a high level problem solving meeting that you really got to get something accomplished, you need to go around and have individual coffee meetings and wherever you like to have coffee and find out everybody where, how everybody's going to kind of come out on this and kind of coach them up a little bit and love them before you ever get in the meeting so you generally know where, the, where this thing's going to go before. I'd do that in every board meeting. If I had a very controversial issue come that I knew had to be addressed, I mean, I had a situation with a youth, so y'all know I'm not just up here talking about something I read in some paperback book, okay? I had a youth pastor. Remember I told you the story yesterday about the man that, with the little girl and the horrible situation? It was horrible. Well, I had a situation where a youth pastor molested a 15-year-old girl. Now, remember I talked about child protection policies? Remember I talked about legal insurance and all that? The good news is we were insured up to the gills. We had our legal setup proper, and we had all of our child protection policies, including the youth department, I mean, in place. The attorneys had written them, everything was clean. Well, so I wasn't concerned about the legal exposure. I'd already brought the insurance company in. But what happened was some of the board members did not want. I had four board members, and two of them wanted to deal with the situation completely opposite than the other three. I mean, they were adamant. So you know what I did? True story. I'm telling you the truth. I took them fishing. I paid $1,000 for that fishing trip. And somebody said, you tried to buy them off. I tried to do whatever worked. <laughs> no, that's a joke. Come on, settle down. I mean, I took them fishing and I spent time with them. And I said, okay, boys, I didn't even bring it up. We caught some big trout. I had a guy leading us. We're in a raft. I mean, we're tearing the fish up. We're excited. We're catching fish. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? They're worth the price of the whole, well, I'm not gonna say that, but. <laughs> Most major issues are solved in a five minute conversation. We caught fish that day. You know, I had two guides working with three people, and that's pretty impressive. One guy doing the raft, the other guy directing. I mean, we're having church. I'm giving good tips to the guides. They love me. I love them. We sit down for five minutes over a T-bone steak, and one of them says this. I knew he was going to say it. I was prepared. Now, I'm not always prepared, but in this situation, I was prepared. And I said, I don't know, have you, have you thought about this particular aspect if that were to happen? You know what he said? No, I haven't. He looked over to the other guy and said, he's right. We fished another day, went home, had a meeting, it was all done. Oh, Robert says, every businessman and every minister ought to learn how to play golf. Because more business gets transacted on the golf course than it ever will in a boardroom. So you learn how to, to use those things. I actually heard him say that. You know, I attended Oral Roberts. Some of you may not know that, but I attended Oral Roberts. And I actually heard him say it then, but I also heard him say it because he came and did chapels. And, you know, I'm old enough now. He was actually doing chapels personally back then. And I heard him say it at my daughter's graduation from ORU in, in 2000 and in 2000, in 2000, 2001. He got up and said, he talked about praying in tongues and my in-laws were there, that was good. And then, um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then he got up and talked about playing golf at the graduation because he's trying to advise the graduates. And he said, more business gets done on the golf course. He said, in 10 minutes on the golf course, then five, then a lifetime sometimes in a boardroom. So I'm sharing that with you because we're talking about these things. So we're talking about decisions reached. Those are directives. They're not, they're not minutes of the meeting itself. We hope you learned something of lasting value today from this Wealth Builders podcast. If you'd like any tools, teachings, or resources mentioned in the podcast, you'll find them online at wealthbuilders.org. Wealth Builders exist to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, 
and your investments. The Wealth Builders Podcast is produced by Celine Williams with music by Audio Jungle and narration by Greg Hunter. Wealth Builders is a nonprofit organization. We depend on your donations to keep this podcast running. Please consider donating to us on wealthbuilders.org.